everybody. This is Derek Kirby, a.k.a. DDP of the Dallas Prospect. And we have an interesting little tidbit. It's the day of Game 7, and yet Tim Hardaway Sr., the father, not only former Maverick, but father of current Maverick, Tim Hardaway Jr., had an interesting note yesterday. He basically went on a radio interview and insisted or not even insinuated, just outright stated that the Porzingis trade, the KP to Dallas trade, was always, in fact, the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade, that Dallas had actually been calling to acquire Tim Hardaway Jr., and that the Knicks, who had already become disenfranchised with Porzingis and what he wanted for his new contract and his situation, pretty much made it clear that you want Tim Hardaway Jr., you're going to have to take Tim, or you're going to have to take Kristaps Porzingis. And that's the polar opposite of what's been understood this entire time. One, because the Tim Hardaway Jr. contract was considered a an atrocious contract at the time it was signed. In July of 2017, the Knicks gave Tim Hardaway Jr. a four-year, $71 million contract. And this was viewed as a very bad contract even when it was signed. It wasn't a good value contract for the Knicks at that time. And so the fact that they insisted that was what was needed in order to get Hardaway, that you had to take KP and not the other way around, makes no sense. KP was the premier player, the former all-star, and was a guy who anybody in the league, any team in the league would have wanted, right? There were stories that the San Antonio Spurs were actually pissed because they had been wanting to acquire Porzingis as well for a while. And Dallas sort of swooped in a little bit to, to take him away from them, essentially. So in that regard, it makes no sense. Now, the timing of this is what also has to be considered, right? Tim Hardaway Jr. is an unrestricted free agent this summer. He's playing big, big minutes right now. He has been having a great past month and a half. Now, he's cooled off a bit at certain times in this series, Obviously, his father was there in Game 6, and pretty much any time he has a member of his family there, especially his father, he seems to show out, which is great. We keep joking about how the Mavericks just need to make Tim Hardaway Sr. a member of the coaching staff, or at the very least, uh, you know, season tickets courtside, something like that, because Hardaway Jr. always plays better when he has him. Now, I think you have to look at that angle of it. It's that his son is about to be a free agent. Everyone knows that KP's dropped off, and he's kind of trying to change the narrative a little bit in his son's favor so that he can get paid because Hardaway Jr. is 29 years old, or about to be 29 years old. This is probably going to be his last shot at a big contract. And consider that Luke Kennard for the Clippers, who has played like six minutes the entire series, has just this past summer with the Clippers signed a $64 million contract. That's obscene. If Kennard last summer got $64 million, what do you think Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to get right now on the market? So not only is he set for a big payday, showing out in the playoffs like this to the point where even Laker fans, because their team's already been eliminated, they're looking longingly over. They're like, oh man, what would it take to get Tim Hardaway Jr. on this team? The fact that they're looking at that, it, first of all, it shows the complete reversal of perception and role about Tim Hardaway Jr. Because the, the trade for Porzingis was always, always viewed in this light of, look, you want Porzingis, you're going to have to be willing to take back these bad contracts, including a pretty fresh Tim Hardaway Jr. contract. You also had to take Courtney Lee and Trey Burke, and Courtney Lee was also getting stupid money as well. But you had to take those contracts in return to get Porzinga. So the, the spinning of this as he tries to essentially insinuate that it was actually Dallas. that I don't doubt Dallas wanted Tim Hardaway Jr. What I doubt is the fact that that was who they initially were talking about. And like, oh, well, I guess we want Tim Hardaway bad enough that we're willing to take KP. No chance. Dallas called for years on the prospect of acquiring Porzingis. Dirk, and Porzingis obviously has had a lot of respect and admiration for Dirk, and there are clear parallels there that Dallas was interested in, and Dirk 
having his own appreciation for Porzingis and his game as well fed into that with the notion of, man, what would it take to get him here in Dallas someday? So Dallas called for years on the prospect of getting KP, and it finally came together when no other teams across the league even thought it was remotely in the cards. Nobody thought that Porzingis was about to come available because it wasn't even made public that he was about to come available. It, it happened incredibly fast. Like, you heard murmurs something might be going on, and then within, like, half an hour, the deal was announced. It was incredibly quick developing, but it, it's only on a public side that it was quick developing. Dallas had been laying the groundwork for this for years, and it finally culminated at the right time. And don't forget, that was the night, that was the morning after the Dennis Smith Jr. triple-double for his final Maverick game. In New York, at the Garden, Dennis Smith Jr. posts a triple-double, and that's when the Knicks were like, hmm, athletic high flyer, young talent. Yes, yes, this looks like someone we can build around. Now, unfortunately, they completely ruined and squandered Dennis Smith Jr., and now he's in Detroit. But all the same, it's, it's nothing more than a father trying to help his son trying to get people to put a little bit of respect on his son's name because for a good while, really until this run, Tim Hardaway Jr. has not gotten the credit he deserves. To his credit, Tim Hardaway Jr. has been more consistent. And I say that as someone who fully acknowledges that he is a hot or cold shooter. He is streaky as all get out. When he is on, he is a flamethrower. And when he is off, he is 6 of 19, and he will shoot you out of a game. So the fact that he's been a little more consistent, especially in the last month, as Dallas has really needed it, whether it was jockeying for playoff position, crawling up from the 7 seed to the 6 seed to the 5 seed, or the actual playoff series itself against the Clippers, Tim Hardaway has been Dallas's second-best offensive player. And that's a shame for KP. I don't think Dallas is doing KP any favors, but let's not get it twisted. Dallas gave KP a five-year, $158 million contract right after uh, his initial acquisition. He got acquired in February. That next offseason, Dallas gave him that deal, that max contract to lock him in for the foreseeable future. If he was a throw-in player, Dallas does not do that. <laughs> they do not do that. And if Tim Hardaway Jr. was, in fact the centerpiece of this, he wouldn't be approaching unrestricted free agency right now. Dallas would have probably hammered out a new long-term deal with him as well. I'm still pretty convinced Dallas is going to bring him back, Tim Hardaway, and they've expressed confidence that they're going to be able to do that. But I don't think you can look at anything and say, this is more than just spin. This is purely, purely spin because Hardaway is hitting free agency his dad knows he has a chance to get one last really big payday. And because of the hot streak he's been on, he's wanting to kind of alter that perception a little bit. Instead of viewing his son as the throw-in for the KP trade, who just happens to be playing perhaps for the first time in terms of national recognition, playing whether it's over his head or at the height of his game, they don't want to embrace that notion. They want to be like, no, no, no. This was always what he was, and you guys just haven't seen it until now because the stage wasn't there. So this was the this was the Hardaway trade, and that's how you should think of it. That's essentially what they're saying here. And I say they. It's really what Tim Hardaway Sr. is saying. He's just stirring the drink. That's it. He's just mixing things up a little bit, getting us to have a conversation and, you know, it, it's kind of silly because it's like, yeah, today is, I mean, we are mere hours away. As I record this, it's 1045 in the morning. We are mere hours away from game seven. KP is vital to Dallas's chances, as is Tim Hardaway Jr. So the timing is kind of like, uh, hey, yo, is this, is this the best time to do this? I'm not sure that it is. It kind of, like... Yes, Tim Hardaway cooled off in the fourth quarter in game six, but by the end of the third quarter, man, you had people jokingly saying, and some of them, I guess, not so jokingly saying, you might as well hand him a blank check right now to lock him down for Dallas in the future. 
And I think his dad is just trying to capitalize on that when his stock is at an all-time high because we don't know what's going to happen in Game 7. So he's trying to put that pressure and perception out there now of like, nah, man, it was always about my son. You need to re-up him now, and you need to start talking about it. Like, it was always the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade. Like, we joked about that in the last month or so. Like, wait a minute, it was the Tim Hardaway Jr. trade? And they're like, yeah, it always was. But he's acting like it legitimately always was. It was not. <laughs> so here's the full quote here before I wrap this up from Tim Hardaway Sr. And it's 105.3 The Fan, who I guess he was speaking with there, who uh, is the source credited for this, other than obviously the man himself. The quote is, Now everybody is saying that Tim Hardaway Jr. was a throw-in. No, Porzingis was a throw-in. Because they, the Mavs, called for Tim Hardaway Jr. and they were going to make a deal for Tim Hardaway Jr. And it so happened that the Knicks didn't want Porzingis anymore because of what he demanded. So when people say Tim Hardaway Jr. was a throw-in, that pisses me off because nobody knows what really happened. Again, I don't think you know either. Or you do, and you're kind of being dense about it. This was... I don't doubt that Dallas had interest. I doubt that it was, hey, this is the centerpiece. We want Tim Hardaway as the centerpiece, and to get Tim Hardaway, we will willingly take KP off your hands. I don't believe that for a second. So it's interesting fodder from the father, as it were, but it's not something that we should concern ourselves with anymore. It's just you got to take it with a pound of salt, I would say, because his proximity and his relationship to one of the guys in question completely conflates his view, and it's in his and his family's interest for it to be viewed in the way he's presenting it now. So anyway, no, nothing to concern yourself with. Let's turn our attention to Game 7 today against the Clippers. Peace.